Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. So tonight we are continuing where we left off in our last podcast. Last time we were reviewing the Night of the Demons. The original film. The original film. And now we're moving on to the sequel that came out in 1994. Yeah, I think the first one was 998, wasn't it? Yes, 998. And this is, um, let me see, about six or... It was six years later. Six years later. Yeah, yeah. actually it was six years later. 88 and 94, you spooky. And rehashing her role is the um, girl who plays Angela, obviously. Angela Franklin. Yes, Amanda... um, Amelia Amelia, Amelia Kincaid. Yeah, so she comes back and reclaims her crown as Queen of the Dark. Although... Elvira, move over. No, no, no. There's only one Elvira. She's like, just like a... a Still possessed... Well, not really, actually. She's dead. So she... They're just... The demon's taking... Completely control well, we, over we her believe, looks. Yeah, we, we believe she's a demon. There's, there's no her in there anymore. Yes, and it's taking on over her her appearance. That's yes. a bad word for it. Very nice. Anyway, we've already watched all four of the movies, including the remake, obviously. Yep, so, we certainly did. And even though we were dissatisfied with the third one because we had to look it up on YouTube, sadly enough. Yeah, I have to go. Uh, we do buy when we need to buy and we YouTube other times and then we get public domain stuff for the old stuff or whatever. But yeah, we do buy have to buy occasionally and sometimes you go, do I want to buy it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And most yeah. of them often have an age thingy wing that us. Yeah, when you're on, you're on YouTube it's a bit of a pain neck, so. but, Anyway. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, we do we do buy quite a few. Um, mm. Yeah, but I've, I've, when, when you've got a huge library it's really hard to buy all the time. So YouTube's and other things and whatever you borrow one and you copy it and put it in your put it in the file you know mm-hmm. yeah, he has all stuff um anyway here we go um all the goody bits okay neither the demons 2 was produced by jeff jeffrey that's he's parents had a great imagination for names didn't they jeff mm-hmm. jeffrey 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 jake they liked it so much they called him twice yeah, they named him twice yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. directed by brian uh, trenchard smith mm-hmm. written by Joe Augustine and James Penzi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the the players. <laughs> I'm guessing we couldn't get a budget or even um, the well, uh, the official. The, well, the budget's whatever. pretty skinny. Um, budget was about 1.4 million or 2.7 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say so you don't know. And we don't know the office box office numbers. No, I went straight. Well, it went straight home video. I see. Yeah, yeah. So there's nothing there. So, so let's say it cost, say two and a half mil. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Maybe. Go on. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now the now, people, the now, players, the players, folks. Okay, dokie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amelia Kincaid, as we said, plays uh, Angela Franklin. Yes, and uh, was the original actor from the first movie. Yay! Now. I won't go all the way down. I'll go down to about eight people or so. Uh, Christy Harris plays BB. Whoever. Uh, Darren Hames, Hames uh, plays Z-Boy. Yeah. Robert Jane plays Perry. Merle Kennedy plays Melissa, nicknamed Mouse Franklin. Yeah. Um, so that is the mm-hmm. younger sister of Angela Franklin, the demon. Yeah, and... Oh. Um, Bit of an orphan in this one. Yeah, a bit of a story in behind it. Anyway. Yeah, uh, Rod McCary plays father. Bob, who's in charge of a an orphanage type home, something or other. In college. Uh, or whatever. Johnny Mor- Moran plays Johnny. Gee, that's, that's an amazing name. Johnny's playing Johnny. That's useful. Uh, you make you confused there, will we? No. Uh, Rick Peters plays Rick. Okay, mm. a lot of imagination here. Jennifer Rhodes plays Sister Gloria. I won't mm. talk about the rest of the people there. Um, yeah. No, I'll leave it at that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so the story begins where it takes place back at the old m- 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 mortuary. That was where the haunting took place, obviously. And two 
Jehovah Witnesses come to the door who have no clue of the house's history whatsoever, in my opinion. If you get an old dilapidated house, it's overgrown weeds, and you knock on the door hoping to get somebody home. Yes, hmm. where's the cars? Oh, wait, the cars were probably... Well, they're really rusty and horrible, and weed's growing all over mm-hmm. them, but yeah. Yes. Anyway, they hear a creak, and they go inside, and there they meet Angela, who invites them in, and they say, we're here to save you, we are um, Jehovah's Witnesses, and we were wondering, do you believe in God, blah, 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 blah. And she invites them to have a cake with her. Unfortunately, this is... They get a little spooky by her her cake and wish to leave but and not to mention the big knife that looks as big as well norman bates would have been proud of it hey oh well i think um (laughs) i can definitely say that uh mike it would be it would definitely um win the biggest knife competition mine size does matter folks (laughs) considering it's a lot bigger than um Michael Myers' knife is what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway, she Around. chops them off screen, and then we flash to the credits, obviously. Dum, 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 Here dum, we dum, actually dum. meet and introduce um, Lissa, um, nicknamed Mouse. Mouse. She's this very quiet, shy little girl. Yeah, and she's a sister to Angela. And, of course, she's in a sort of, um, a sort of school... Um, um, it's like a boarding school, a boarding for, troubled school children. for troubled children. And she's has ongoing nightmares about her dead sister who never came home. And sadly enough, all the girls in her the the um dorm dislike her. They pick on her. They pick on her constantly about her appearance and the fact that they also gossip about her the fact of what happened, especially how her mother and father received a letter from Angela, and a few weeks later they were found with their their throats cut, meaning they took their own lives. Yeah, so this poor kid has been traumatised. The sister uh, went missing, and the parents killed themselves. So she's a troubled child. Yes, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so they ha- ha- devise a plan of. You know, for Halloween. It's Halloween again. Yet again. Hey. And what better way than have a Halloween party. <laughs> and this is where we meet Sister Gloria, who is... um. She's actually a really interesting nun in this production, I would yeah, say. I wish there was a bit more of a backstory on her. She comes off as was, very strict <clears throat> and very... <clears throat> very yeah, impressionable when you think about it. She has got a lot of character. And it's very interesting. It, 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 yeah, um, I went to a convent school with nuns and stuff. Uh-huh. And no priests? Yeah, yeah priests there. They were okay. part of the Tatsuma Church. But uh, she came out as a really good sort of hard nun. I had a hard nun. The head miss- I got six of the best friends in primary school, you know. Ooh, yeah. I was a really good boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not... <coughs> anyway, um, she's concerned about this upcoming Halloween party, I think it is. And her f- the fa- father, Bob, says... Oh, let them cut loose. Yeah, you know, let down their hair. You know, let take off the um, the uh, habit and just go crazy. Yes, you know, it's a nasty habit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. So anyway, uh, another kid in the school we meet is a guy who's obsessed with demonology, obviously, and yes. of course, most of the kids they avoid him like a weirdo. He is obviously. And, but it doesn't stop him from, you know, questioning the the priest and the nun about the possibility of contacting the other side and stuff like that. Of course, they just say, shrug it off, and say it's it's evil and it's sh- that's something that, that that's a world that we should not explore more because it's not a it's not a nice world we should explore. But it doesn't stop him for doing a bit of witchiness inside the of uh, a church which was a, which would be considered a bit sacrilegious well it wasn't actually it's in the sacristy where the priest hang out yeah where he does his, yeah. his offices yeah, yeah. the same thing yeah, off the side of the church here yeah. he actually makes contact with angela and he gets spooked of course he's told oh. by the priest um to get lost of course, one of his books goes missing, and he accuses both some boys in his dorm of taking it. But they say, no, no, they didn't take it. But they doesn't stop them from continuing abusing his, um, seeing, being, bullying him, obviously, saying he's a weirdo, blah, 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 and his stuff. Wow. Later that night, when they're going to 
for their Halloween party. They dress up. Mouse dresses up in the most ridiculous cr- Ooh, Halloween oh, po- costume. Was, um... She dresses up like a, in a clown costume. That's and not right, even yeah. a convincing clown. Yeah, yeah. She just yeah. wears the clown... F- Bottom um, part, yeah. The, the, know, yeah no, but the f- not, not the makeup. The, the yeah. clothes, not the makeup. Yeah, yeah. Just the clothes. It just she, she still has her ordinary hair. She didn't even have a red nose on. Hello. Yeah. Anyway, they, they want to ditch... The Halloween party that's taking place inside the um, the school, and want to go someplace a little bit more fun, which they do. They decide to go. They trick Mouse to come with them to uh, to the haunted house, but she didn't know it was the haunted house. Well, actually, she had that, dreams well, about actually, it too. She knew where her sister had disappeared. But she didn't know she was going to the same house where her sister disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. she gets really scared and refuses to go inside. Isn't that right? She stays inside the car. She says he's a bit... Yeah. yeah. Well, the others decide to go explore the um, the house, you know, traipse inside, get a little crazy. But eventually, Mouse gets spooked by something in, you know, outside the car, and she tries to run. Of course, the um the creature catches up to her, and it turns out to be one of the nasty girls, a real the ringleader, I think, and yeah, her boyfriend so. who decide to drag her in and try to do a um satanic. Satanic ritual. ritual over her on an altar, yes. Yeah. Going, it looks like they're going to sacrifice her and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. as they're about to do this, um, we hear a, 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 hear a um, mouse scream and the rest, of, some of the group members re- go back and try to stop it. And, of course, they find out it's an actual fake knife. And this causes them to disperse and head back through to... out. Back to the to the school, and along the way, I should mention one of the girls. I think it's BB. I think it is. Yeah, BB. Yeah. She bought. She found um, a discarded lipstick that was in the bath, one of the bathrooms in the oh, that rings in the laundry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. she took takes it with her, and on the way back to the um, the um, pa- the um, school, she takes it out, and she gets a fright that there was something inside the lipstick. And of course, she just her f- friends dismiss this and continue back to the dorm. Of course, Mouse is sad. She goes up to her room and cries her eyes out because of what they did. It turns out the mount, the lipstick that that one of the girls brought back, it turns out to be um, what's the term for um, bringing back something that's un- that has un- something unholy attached to it? A conjured. Well, uh, conduit, yeah, conduit, they, probably, yeah. Conduit, yeah, something that, conduit works for me, yeah, yes. Something that attaches itself to evil, obviously. And, of course, this creature that was inside the lipstick starts attacking our, our ringleader girl, obviously. And it's kind of eventually gets inside her. I won't go into details. It's disgusting, to be honest. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yep. Yeah. And she eventually also turns her boyfriend into one of the said creatures, obviously. Anyway, they eventually, um, it, and also he, um, one of the, her friends, obviously. And anyway, soon enough, um, Perry, I think, was it the boy who, the boy, which one was the boy who did the, the demonic um, ritual at the, at the church? Oh, uh, I'm confused. It was Ed Boy's other guy. Just Johnny, was it? No. Um, Johnny or Perry? Perry, I would have. Perry, I would. What, this, yeah, Perry, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Perry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah anyway, yeah. he tells what he knows to the nun because the father just refuses to listen to him about... He doesn't um, believe his crap. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And he hey. starts suspecting <laughs> that that the since the um, both um, the group went there, they also brought something back with them to create some chaos from... That brought, they brought chaos to the school, obviously. Anyway, eventually um, they they start loading up on stuff like um, the nun dresses in her habit, the full black and white. Yeah, outfit. full full head gear. You know, yeah, yeah. And look like Darth Vader without the face mask. You know. And Perry loads himself up with some holy water and yeah, other they items. didn't have an, a water pistol. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, like a very blasters, water soaked yeah, 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 thing. Yeah, water soaked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, a lot of holy water going here. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're gonna need it. Anyway. And bags, but no, didn't have some. some uh, Balloons full of it, sort yeah, of. Water, yeah, water balloons. Yeah, what, they water bombs. You want to call them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some other stuff. Obviously. See, they should do this. Van Helsing never did this. Oh 
well, he was never around now in down there. So oh, well, he was, could have taken a bit more, just a little bubble with him. Of course, <laughs> using the their advanced new technology, they were able to defeat some of the demons. Of course, taking the other remaining people who were not infected by the demon stuff, they were taken to the church to be protected. Isn't that right? Yes, exactly because, right. Because, you know, the whole... It's what they always say in those stories, that demons will not cross over, you know, into uncharted territory like that. Especially Something along those lines, yes. Of course, some of the people, our lead characters, end up deciding to go back to the canvas to try to find any remaining people. Melissa gets, um, con- you know, conned by her sister, Angela, to come with her to the mansion, obviously. I mean, back to the mortuary place, obviously, without even putting much of a, up a fight, obviously. And eventually our group returns there, including Father Bob, obviously, who refuses he, to believe he, that he, this is happening. They want to borrow the car and, and, and he's right, we'll all go. And he's, I'll prove you it's rubbish, he said. Yeah, he still doesn't <laughs> believe this, that this is all, to him it's all a fiction, a fantasy, a fable. It's all crap, man, whatever. It's just a make-believe, one of the kiddies, whatever, yeah. blah, blah. He, yeah. he didn't believe. Yeah, soon oh, enough, yeah, one, little faith. Yeah, soon one of the young boys, I think it was one of the, uh, the, the leader click person, his boyfriend, uh, pretends to be an innocent bystander, but he just says, he just pretty much tries to kill the young priest. And, of course, um, he gets infected, and they have to, of course, use the their instruments to, you know, remove the the um, demonic thingy wing, obviously, using the water squirters and any of the uh, and their other religious items. As the so the rest of the group they disperse and of course just like in, in the past in the other movie we see a lot of doors slamming shut cl- closing like and the opening, old poltergeist type stuff you know, and, yeah. and dividing the characters as we go along and of course um, Sister Gloria is able to find. Um, um, Melissa, who is on a, not the same altar, and Angela is about to sacrifice her because she's a virgin, obviously, and being pure, that means she would give, she get, get power from it. Great power. Oh. Anyway, of course, the rest of the group. They eventually Perry. He he kicks the bucket after nearly getting killed. He nearly. Oh poisoned by one of the demons but luckily enough I think it was Johnny who was able to put some of the holy water down his throat to, that's right to, that's right, yeah. to, so that he won't not turn into a demon yeah. and he tells them that 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 Angela's, Angela's plan is to get Melissa sacrificed so she could become stronger I mean, it probably explains a lot with the first movie, um, the girl in that one. I think her name was um, Judy. I think that she was also a virgin, considering she mentioned something about not doing it with another guy, obviously. Is that right? Uh, Yeah, something like that. And the same for... um, in the third movie, there is also an, um, a virgin cheerleader, blah, blah, blah. I won't go into that detail yet. But it seems that, um, that Angela's power source comes from... His main power source is from a female virgin or virgin in you know in name, obviously. No, there's never a male virgin in around. Well, when it, we're still <laughs> it's still days ahead, and there's still a remake that I mean, still another on its oh, way. Gosh. We don't know. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, um, Nurse Gloria suggests to nurse. Ed- Sister I mean, Gloria. Sister Gloria. I don't know why I said nurse. Bl- uh, well, uh, anyway, sort of nurse. Sister Gloria the tells um, Angela to trade places with her, Melissa, obviously, which she does. Of course, before we, th- we get to that, she kind of nearly comes to locking her head off. But it turns out it was a habit that got knocked off. Yeah, she, she ducked the head really quickly, and mm-hmm. so the, the habit got knocked off. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then the things wear the head. Yeah, <laughs> and she, she ducked the head down real quick. You know, so, very yeah. smart mm, move. Very smart. Very. Whoa, that was pretty quick, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty close. Great reflexes. Hey. This nun must have been <laughs> uh, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider in a previous life or something or oh, other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, she she changes places, and Melissa um, is t- encouraged by her sister Angela to kill. Sister Gloria, obviously, but of course, instead of kill her, she tries to kill her sister, obviously, knowing she's a de- she's not really the sister that she had once upon a time because she's no longer part of no the- longer an Angela, is she? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they fight her off as best they can. And eventually, she's defeated, and they head back to the canvas, and all the other kids eventually come out of the church. 
for, for, you know, safe, unharmed, bland, but soon enough we notice the same lipstick that causes all this trouble, you know. Is laying there, grabs laying the phone, picks it up. And Ready a for a sequel. But we never have it. So technically, it, we never see that see what happens to our characters. I like to think, thanks to Sister Gloria, she may also be able to vanquish this next demon. Ah. Um, that is the end of Night of the Demon 2. As well as. So that was a good movie, even yeah. though I did think it was, I did think it was interesting, especially how some of these um, Night of the, of the Demons to thing, they kind of get to the meat of the story instead of just, Blah blah this, blah blah that. I still reckon they should have had a bit more of a backstory on Sister Gloria. I wouldn't mind that too, or a little bit on yeah. Melissa, considering that she, um, she's, our, well, I know she's not the lead, ca- totally the lead character in this one. She's more or less the. Um, well, yeah, the, she, she was. She was. Uh, what's these angels' younger sister and. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, she's a virgin. What more do you need to know? Exactly. <laughs> but so. Sister, Sister Gloria, the, 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 yeah, the, uh, what do you call it, Rambo nun, yeah. uh, mm. was pretty damn good. But no backstory, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, yeah she seemed to know what to, exactly what to do. She even had c- fighting skills. Yeah, like, a bit of kung fu and stuff, yeah, whatever. What she she, she, she were watching Jackie Chan movies, even back in those mm, days, or Bruce Lee movies. I or, don't know. Uh, Considering <laughs> Jackie Chan would have been popular even back then. Well, yeah, was, was he around or was Bruce Lee movies? Mm. Uh, anyway, that's me. Or Jet Li or whatever, yeah. Anyway, well, generally, yeah, yeah. I think would I mean would have come years later. I, I'm not sure, yeah, whatever. Um, but I don't think he would have been as popular as uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce or Jackie Chan. Yeah, yeah, remember, yeah. the Green Hornet. Remember, yeah, mm. Kato. <laughs> anyway, so let's just dive into reviewers and find out. For well, not much actually to talk about really, so we might as well do that. Yeah. Die the Demons. Mm. Mixed t- to positive reviews. Okay. Take this. Okay, look, a couple of them here. Dread Central praised the film, giving it four out of five blades and stating that the film was gory, Mm -hmm. funny, Mm -hmm. and a perfect treat for a dark and stormy night. Or whenever it makes you day. Okay. Uh, Generation Multiplex, Mm. the image of youth in contemporary American cinema. Mm. That's a long title, isn't it? Yes, Uh, Timothy Sherry wrote that while both films paired, well, the first one and this one, um, while both films paired teen sexuality, <laughs> obviously, mm. uh-huh. and demonic possession together, mm. the teen characters in the sequel were more developed than in its predecessor. So what mm. you're saying really is, she so liked the second movie better. Why didn't you just say that? Yeah, speak, uh, speak in um, less... <laughs> talk in, in English. Di- no, speak less uh, dictionary and speak yeah, clearly. Yeah. She, th- she swallows the thorus. No, okay. uh, no JoeBlow.com criticised the film, mm. ah, stating that it has a crappy storyline and no scares. Hello. But pra- well, wait a minute. Plenty but scares. praise the movie's gore. Mm. And the acting of Christy Harris. Which one's Christy? Um, Oh, BB, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, Uh, yeah. now, it's a a crappy storyline and no scares, and then it says, hey, it's got lots of gore. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Lights of blood wasn't scary enough. Fair enough. Okay, Mm. right. Uh, DVD verdict also Mm. praised the movie's gore as well as its comedic part see it was done as a light hearted not a serious one even though it doesn't say it's a comedy uh, citing the character of Sister Gloria as a highlight highlight the Los Angeles Times called the film a smart amus- amusing horror picture boasting a capable cast hmm. which means they don't really like these sort of movies but they assess that yeah it's pretty good it's, it's bums on seats or not bums on seats it was um, yeah who knows? It, the, the, the people in the audience uh, at home liked it. There you go. There you go. Not myself. Not much else to say on the... Mm. Da, 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 yes. Da, da. Anyway, so so <laughs> let's rate it. And well, like, like, what do you think? Was this better than the first movie? I mean, when we did Babysitter mm. uh, and Babysitter 2, I like Babysitter 2. Mm. Um, well, Night, it was of more the, developed. Night of the so, yeah, Demon, the first one, was a good... It wasn't, Ground, wasn't bad. Um, you know, 
it was a good um, foundation for the, the, fr- yeah, and, the franchise. And, and the sequel bounced off it quite nicely. And so, how yeah. it kind of brings back origi- original face to, and somehow it's a good thing they did bring her back because I think that this sort of thing really suits her. There's something about uh, Amelia Kincaid's depiction of um, Angela. She's done it well. Uh, yeah. She comes over as well, an attractive woman, this is, uh, mm-hmm. sexy, mm-hmm. sinister. Uh-huh. What else? Uh, well, all, when, all, the, all the things yeah, that... I can't one think... minute she uh, n- n- starts off as normal, then she becomes a demon, mm-hmm. and it, the change is quite nice. You know? yeah. And she's enticing and everything else, and alluring at the same time. She goes into a demon face and scares the crap out of everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. See, that's good. That's really good. I like it. Yeah. yeah, I think it has a lot of potential and a lot of character. Which, yeah. and I like the fact that she continues dressing totally in the gothic get in dark. Yeah, once you wear something like a, some uh, look, looks a bit like a wedding dress or something. Or well, it looks like it. Bit, I bit, mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. if it was, um, if, if Evil Queen dressed in black garments, which would have been cool. <laughs> Yeah, something. but I don't mind it. I mean, I like the fact that that she's an ongoing character that becomes sort of um, an icon in this yeah. this movie. Now this the funny, series, no, I was going to say she, she, she shows Which, up in number three, doesn't she? Yes, she yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. This, that would be her third movie yeah, until third movie. Yeah, they right. did the yeah. remake, which was. Had a different Angela for that one, obviously, yeah, because person. by then she would have been a bit wrinkly. She would have been too old, yes. and, it's part, fact, and and demons don't age. And not to mention, yeah. this is um, she, by the time the next one comes along, the third one it, that would mean she would have been nineteen. It would take place in nineteen ninety seven, I think. Yeah, so she's getting so yeah, by the time she wasn't looking as yeah, young as she, she they wanted to be. She continue yeah. carrying rude, the torch nothing. technically. Even though I do think she's she pulls it off really nicely, you know. Yeah, like it's a beautiful lady, but yeah, they did one middle is someone and, in the thirties playing yeah, a teenage role. And but yeah. while some people would pick it apart and saying hey, demons don't age, but how do you know the demons that? Well, we donation. watched Beetlejuice the other day, mm-hmm. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel, yeah, and no. with all the makeup mm. uh, and a bit of a little bit, a little bit of a paunch. Um, yeah. I think more he or less. Looks dang good. I think more Michael or less Keaton. to fans out there, they probably would look more forward to the fact that the original actress who played Angela came back as a as an ongoing icon, just like um, Jason Voorhees, like Kane Hodder, or the Freddy Krueger actor Robert England. And a number of other ones who rehash their roles just to get that last scare in, and it's okay because I like the I like it when it's such an icon. It comes, it becomes, it becomes the the, the um the it becomes really the um focus of Halloween mostly, and yeah, people exactly. and people want that hmm. because they want icons to look up to during Halloween. You know, people to you know, characters to dress up, stuff like that. And the new ones would have, like, the t- today's new ones would be Art the Clown from Terrifying. Oh, I like Art the Clown. He, 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 for a guy who doesn't have any words to say, he carried a really good yeah. role. Yeah. And there's mm-hmm. the um, whole um, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey um, characters. They are going to probably <sighs> take, they will probably will take the world by storm, If even if people don't like them now. But I imagine uh, in yeah. generations to come, People will start to like them later on. You would like to think. It's my, opi- the Pooh. It's my opinion the that Pooh. whenever a new generation of, of movies that that star new characters like slashes and stuff, they start to grow on audiences and they develop into super well, icons we, and cult classic people. you look at Universal people. Studios way back when, they they got Frankie mm-hmm. and Rack Baby and the Wolfman. Mm-hmm. Um, they're the main three. Mm-hmm. Uh, they rode Brendan them for about. Ten years, yeah, and then they said, "Okay, we've done it." But and um, yeah, yeah, and, and then, there you go. They, they became the pinup boys, didn't they? Yeah, mm. I don't know which one it was, but I think it was the when you play Blood and Honey, and the the st- mainstream studios approached him and asked um, the director if they could buy the the movies off him, you know, buy the franchise off him. But he refused. Exactly. Because that's just his baby and you don't mess with some... You never get rid of your teddy. Yeah. No. If they want to keep <laughs> it, let them. 
I mean, such a thing will no. probably grow and develop and that, and stuff like it's that. It's all about money. If they can see it, they can make money out. They buy it off there, yeah. then they make their own movies it's, out of it. It's you, something you. that people have learned over the years not to hand over their baby product to uh, to to a to a company that's going to make re- money out of make it. money and <laughs> probably redo it over and over and try to make yeah, it yeah, and make yeah. different like all the Rocky movies and, and stuff you know and, and soon enough <laughs> you'll be confused out of your wits and Halloween and so <laughs> anyway the next movie comes after this one is um, is Night of the Demons Part 3 and that was done in 1994 so we'll probably be reviewing no, that it, next time this one was done in 94 no I was talking about the third movie yeah. Yes, the third movie was in 1997. You said 94. No. Okay, 1994. I mean, seven. <laughs> no, is that better? 997, yeah. That's, anyway, that's the next one. So yeah. that one we'll do next time. So let's Yay. break this now because I'm running out of subjects to talk about. That's all right. That's okay. Uh, I'm trying to think what about the other one, eight, eight and a half, something. It doesn't matter, I mean, at this point. No, I mean... Because each one will yeah, be different. I, like, I, I, I want to be a little bit consistent in my grading for these these ones. Look, I think I, I did about eight and a half on the last one, but look, mm-hmm. I, look I'm going to give it eight and a half to nine on this one as well because mm-hmm. it's, it is what it is. It's a simple story. It's a good... I think it's a good... Basic storyline. Um, it's achieved its goal. It's made a horror film. It's made some teenagers. Well, put some teenagers in a horror house mortuary and put a demon in there, and people died. And there was blood and stuff. Mm. So One thing that bothers me. It wasn't me too that, bad. Yeah. One thing that bothers that, me, guys, half. is that in the in both mo- the sequels, no one seemed to catch on to the fact that about the the the. Haunted House's history about if you walk in, you never walk out. Mm. Even before Halloween. Anyway, so what do you rate Abandon it? Abandon hope all oh, wait, you, you enter here. No. Oh, okay. yeah, I about eight and a half, so what are you going to give it? So I'm going to rate it, um, I think I rated it last time a higher one, so I'm going to rate it um, nine out of ten myself. There you go. I mean, no, I think it's, that it's, these it's a good, good fun watch. It's not, it's not, it's not sort of top of the pole there or over here. Of jump scares every five seconds and everything. Yeah. It's just a good watch, okay? There There's you nothing go. wrong yeah. with um, a few comedy bits, a little bit of Yeah, it's not put off as a comedy. Don't get me wrong. It's just not a comedy, but there are some light-hearted bits in it mm-hmm. to soften it a little bit. How's that? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's it's not like... Um, I, I know it, ha- it mentioned gore and stuff, which it does, but I do like the fact that it has some interesting moments, especially yeah. when... Um, uh, during the satanic ritual, the um, girl freaked out when when the, she thought she was going to get sacrificed by the um, the those horrible nasty girl nasty girl. And, and, and it was it was a fake knife with a retractable blade in it. I it? wish I could find a knife that that <laughs> it looked, it looked really good. Yeah, it's I just, wish I could find yeah. a knife that believable to use in a production. Oh, they probably made it. They probably do. I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it's spring with a spring loaded blade in the handle. But it's here, always the. They're, they're pretty much like the butcher knife type style, yeah, like yeah. Michael Myers ones, obviously. But or Norman the, Bates ones. But, <laughs> but the ones I, I've been trying to find, I keep getting, are the, the, the um, teeny wee A bit like hunting ones. knife. They look yeah, more yeah, like yeah. Um, retractable blades compared to a real prop, yeah. prop knife that you, that you wear. Mm. Anyway, where do you get it? Yes. I'm glad you watched. Now, I think I mentioned the same thing on the last one. Yes, you can get both. Um, through eBay and Amazon, so you can get them other sources probably as well as. eBay has it for sale, Amazon has it for rent and for sale. Now, I keep warning people on these old movies, be careful, there's VHS, okay? There might also be laser just hanging around, so make sure you get the right product. What I would suggest you do is go by what I keep telling people all the time, who the director is and who the actor is. And then you go along there and then check the dates and yes, I got the right one, and I got the right product. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because sometimes you get, uh, yeah, isn't it Night of the Demons? Or just the remake was done. It's got the same name in what 2007 or something mm-hmm. rather. Didn't even change the name. So yeah, you get the right product, get the right name. Night of the Demons, mm-hmm. 1994, and just make sure it's a DVD or a Blu-ray. Right. Da da. Da da. Da Yes. So anyway, cool. that's. Night of the, the Demons 2. So um, I'll let you guys know what... Um, 
We I had do number three. Yeah, we'll do oh, okay. number three next time, possibly. Um, yeah, and it'll be next time. Later on, obviously. Yeah. So hopefully, after this one, you will start our next review on the third movie, and hopefully the remake coming we after might that do one that, too, yes. which is not. And compare it to the original. And compare it to the mm. original. Ah. So that's about it from us, guys. So you know where to find the movie. It's on both. Um, DVD yeah, and Blu-ray. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on uh, eBay and Amazon. Like I said, but <clears throat> if they've got it, other places probably have it as well. You may also yeah. get. Um, um, you may get all four if necess- You know, in a, in a group. Uh, in a collection. Sometimes you can get the pack. Uh, one, two, and three. But I don't know if the the remakes in there. Mm, you may, but, yeah. may not. But yeah, you get. Um, but yeah, you may not want thing? to do that. Uh, you might you might test the first one out and say you don't like it, mm, <laughs> and say so, yeah, uh, right. why are you going to buy the other ones? Uh, but yeah. there are new and second hands, um, yeah. whatever. And you, you mm. might you, you maybe I'll see it on uh, YouTube or mm. whatever. And you, if yeah. you can rent it through uh, Amazon, yeah. it might be a bit cheaper that way. Yeah, yeah. the remake obviously yeah. is has a different story, but I won't tell it to you nah. right now, obviously. So. That's about it from us, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, new pod, this latest podcast, and we'll see you guys for our next one. So this is Sarah Stevenson. Yeah, tomorrow. Saying see you guys round on Boys and Ghouls Film Review. Bye for now, and keeping scared. Bye, guys.